What's up guys, welcome to a new tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to do this amazing fake infinite zoom effect inside of Final Cut Pro. Full disclaimer, I first saw this tutorial over at Ryan Nango's YouTube channel. He does amazing tutorials, also sells amazing Final Cut Pro plugins. Check him out, he's really amazing, but I really wanted to try this effect out for myself. So let's do it. So how do we create this insane fake infinite zoom effect? First, what do we need to shoot? Look for a place with a long line of sight and maybe even some things like branches or something like that to be in the way so you can mask it at these places. I went for this long path in the woods, then I recorded myself on a tripod walking on the path while zooming in at 70 millimeters. I took the shot with a 24 to 70 millimeter Canon zoom lens. You don't need to have a zoom lens for that one. You can also use a fixed lens, but a zoom lens will also come in handy. You only need to be in the first shot. For the second shot, I left my camera on the tripod without moving it, but I zoomed out to 24 millimeters and left it recording for about 20 seconds. This of course depends on how long you want your zoom to last. After that was done, I moved my tripod about 10 to 15 meters back and tried matching the shot before that, just zoomed out even more. To help with the framing, I turned on the center marker on my A7S III. After 20 more seconds of recording, I moved 10 to 50 meters again and recorded for 20 more seconds. I then repeated that process again and again. Of course, you can do that for as often as you want. Once we're done with shooting, let's jump right into Final Cut. First, I trimmed all the clips to the desired length, but so that every clip we shot has the same length. Now let's start with the first clip we shot at 70 millimeters and put that one above the second clip we shot on 24 millimeters. Now we have to put the clips together. Scale the clip down with the transform option so that it fits the first frame. To match the clip exactly, you can turn your opacity down to 50% to really make the transition seamless. Once a clip fits, it's time to look up a mask to really glue everything together. You can either use a shape mask for a quick and easy solution or use a draw mask to draw around the parts where the transition can be smoother, like for example at the tree trunk right here. Then I also adjusted the exposure a little bit to make it fit even more. Once we're done with that, we have to select both layers and pre-compose them. Now we repeat that process and put the next clip under the pre-composed clip. Then we scale the pre-composed clip down again, make it fit on 50% opacity and then draw a mask to blend it together. This time I used the natural frame of the two tree trunks left and right. Now, you guessed it, repeat the process, pre-compose it, put the next clip under the pre-composed layer and scale it down, make it fit and then mask it. In this step I had some problems with the masking but just play around with it a little bit. Even if you think the transition is obvious, once you're zoomed out and added the animation and motion blur and everything, it will fit together even better. So don't worry if it's not perfect, perfect, but of course the more time you spend, the better the end result will be. Now let's just quickly do the last two times, pre-compose it, put the next layer under it, scale it down and make it fit, now mask it and repeat it, pre-compose, next layer beneath it, scale it down and make it fit and lastly mask around it. As you see again in the last step, the mask doesn't even have to be in the least at 16 by 9 You can also create the weirdest masks to make the blend good. So after we pre-compose it for the last time, we have to click down here on the little transform rectangle to click on crop and change it from trim to Ken Burns. This will give you two rectangles, a green one called start and a red one called end. Now let's make the red one as big as possible so that it fits the entire frame because that will be our end frame. And make the green rectangle as small as possible and frame it so that it's all the way zoomed in in the beginning of the clip. Now in my example when I played it, it wasn't zoomed all the way in so we have to repeat it again. So pre-compose the clip again, go to transform, crop, can burns and again make the red rectangle big for the end frame and the green one small for the beginning frame. Now the last thing we have to do to tie it all together is put some motion blur on top of everything. This doesn't come with Final Cut but it's available for free in Ryan Nangle's online shop. I'm basically using this since the beginning of my Final Cut Pro journey like since 2017. It's an amazing plugin a must-have in my opinion, so be sure to look in the description to download it for free in his online shop. Now put some color grading on it and done is our fake infinite zoom and also this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and also consider subscribing right here for more videos just like that one. You can find more Final Cut Pro videos right here and right here and I will hopefully see you in the next video. Goodbye!